the, all the individual singularities species, markets, gov government organizations, any singular entity that we were talking about before forms what he calls the actual. And unlike the relationship between the general and the particular, which is a relationship of logical membership, particular entities belong to a category or are members of a category, and all we need to specify is the necessary and sufficient conditions for belonging to that category, Deleuze ditches that and says the relationship between the universal singular or the virtual and the individual singular or the actual is one of process process that unfolds the universal singularity into its, into its many actualizations. So that unfolds the abstract vertebrate into all the different vertebrates, many of whom we have never seen. Imagine that you are a Martian zoologist who lands on Earth when the dinosaurs were still ruling, running the show. And you look at the Velociraptors and Tyrannosaurus Rex and, and oh my god, the reptilian line of vertebrates is so rich. Look at all the designs. And then you look at the mammalian line, the one that we belong to, and it's like a single rat-like creature that is downright ugly. <laughs> you know, it's like hairy and it's like, you know, cross-eyed. <laughs> what is wrong with that creature? Jesus Christ. The world belongs to reptiles. Look at all those designs that they fly with pterodactyls, and, you know, they swim, they eat each other. Oh my God. How could that Martian zoologist have, been, have predicted that out of that rat, ugly rat, rat creature, <laughs> giraffes and whales and humans and chimpanzees and bats and dogs and cats were going to come out? No one could have predicted. They were all implicated in that rat-like creature and only a process of unfolding, given enough time, could show us the richness of those spaces. So what connects this two is what he calls progressive differentiation. A non-logical category. Yeah. A divergent process. A process of producing differences. A process of expressing what was only implicated in that rat-like creature. Now express yourself. Be giraffe. Become a giraffe. Become a rhinoceros, become a whale, which brings us back to becoming animals. When Deleuze says becoming animals, it's important for artists to become animals. He's not saying put little fangs here and pretend to be a vampire or tattoo your body so that you look like a tiger. It's not a matter of resembling an animal. It's a matter of going from the individual singularity that we are, up to the universal singular, as a conceptual leap, as a leap of the imagination, and then down the progressive differentiation route in such a way that you don't end up human. In other words, he's talking about a real process. He's talking about, of course, a technique that needs to be mastered. And because he gave us so few details as to how this works, it will probably be the task of his followers to unfold the multiplicity that is Deleuze. But at least we know that he was not joking around, and at least we know he was not using metaphors. He was not just trying to invent a new terminology to compete with other terminologies that were around him in the 60s. He was trying to invent a new thing. And progressive differentiation, or the successive production of differences and the expression of all those differences that were implicated in the original abstract animal is an act of creation. Every artist should have its own space of possibilities, as rich as possible, and spend his or her career 
progressively differentiating that space. If you can put your name, if you can put your signature, if you can put your individual singularity as a graffiti tag on one of those universal sing singulars, one of those multiplicities, and then you or your followers unfold it in such a way that it has the richness of that rat that became giraffe and became hypothalamus and all that, you're a great artist. You have matched the power of creativity and expressivity of nature. You have become something else than yourself. You have left the world of being human all too human. Thank you very much. First time when you came here and played the role of I am the realist and all the others are stupid, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't do that. Right, right. I'm grateful for that because I think between that what you call the idealist or the constructivist and the realist, at least in today's philosophy, we found the in between of both. We understand that. Uh, the material or nature, as you call it, has is not just an empty X, but it has an X. Passivity, as you call it, or a seduction, a challenge, or whatever uh, in there. But it needs us, as you also needs us and our best imagination to open up and allow it in and allow it to change us. So I'm grateful that you always talk about the human, all too human, because that's the human I don't want anything to do with. I want a human, superhuman. That's right. <laughs>